the second speaker this morning, Y.P. Lee from Utah. The title of his talk is Factoriality in Realm of Witten Theory. Uh, I want to thank the organizer for invitation to speak in this co conference. <laughs> Let me start by saying I, I do not have a proof of the conjecture by Kasakov, Konsevich, and Pantev. So if you're coming for this, I'm sorry, I don't have a proof. Uh, but I will talk about uh, the general philosophy we have uh, about the functorality in Gromitian theory. So the main, the main problem with Gromitian theory about functorality is, uh, is their uh, Gromitian theory does not have any manifest functoriality. So, for example, the quantum core march does not pull back or push forward, etc. So, uh, so that that's the main problem, and so therefore, uh, a lot of things we would like to have, uh, we we don't have, and so we have to find another way to address this issue. So, uh, what we really want to have uh, is some sort of functoriality. With respect to uh, <coughs> first regular embedding and the projection, and so that's because usually, if you study uh, any projective morphism, then you know that uh, by definition of projective morphism, you can always factor that through so this guy, uh, and so, oh by the way, so everything I'm talking about today is going to be uh, the spaces are always smooth, it can be all before, but it has to be smooth, and I'm, talk I, I'm always over uh, the ground field of complex numbers. So. You can factor this through regular embedding, and then this is going to be uh, projective bundle. So this is projection. So if you can do, if you can work out uh, functorality with respect to regular embedding and projection, then you will have a very general functorality. However, in in this in this case, we cannot. Uh, so uh, the best so far is the follow. So. First, you cannot do any general regular embedding, but you do, you can, when this map, let's call it I, if I is uh, hypersurface, or complete intersection, then you do have some kind of functorality. And this functorality you call, usually call quantum left shifts. <coughs> because classically, left shifts told us uh, if there is some kind of uh, hypersurface, then there is a relation between the classical core march between the smooth project variety and its hypersurface uh, hyper -surface section. So there is a quantum left shift. So that's. Yeah, but I'm, so but I have, yeah, so I should say this. I just, uh, yes. Is it possible that the same morphism between x and y can be factorized in two ways? Yeah, you can factor it in many different so ways. In the sense, if the construction will use the factorization, you know. 
uh, it will depend on the Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and so functorality should not, so in, in a sense, functorality should not depend on how you factorize this. <laughs> and well, I mean, as you know, uh, so this, if you can do it in general regular embedding, then this projective bundle can be any, uh, can be very uh, trivial projective bundle for them, it can be project, just, just trivial projective bundle, projective spaces over one. But since you can, this regular embedding has to be uh, constrained, it can only be uh, high, complete intersection. So you want to uh, minimize, so in this process, there is some kind of loss of information. Just like in uh, usual uh, classical lectures, have a friend theorem. So there is some kind of loss of information. So you want to minimize the loss of information. So you want to uh, carefully choose this so that minimum, uh, you will choose. And in that case, you, you want to prove a little bit more general uh, functorality with respect to projection. And so if this guy is called pi, this pi is really a projective bundle over the base. So, so this will be uh, some kind of. Uh, or you can do this in more generally toric bundle. Uh, but but projective bundle, I mean, not more generally, but uh, you can also do it toric bundle. And so this projective bundle, you, you, you can be very. Uh, choosy and so this project bundle, so this relation, this kind of functorality is called quantum uh, Le Hirsch. So let me, uh, so now we have, the, assume that we have this kind of a two, two new tools and let's try to see what we can prove about the functorality of uh, this golden theory. So maybe I should first say a few words about quantum lifts. So quantum lifts, there are actually uh, two components of quantum lifts. The first component is to uh, relate, so if you have, uh, so if you have x embedded in y, and you have an ample line bundle. Such that, uh, and you have a section such that uh, x is a zero section of your line bundle. And then, it, then the quantum left is usually, uh, so it try to relate Gromitian theory. So you try to get uh, Gromitian theory of y, and then you, you want to get uh, as many information as, as much information as possible to grow in theory of x. And so this in genus zero, uh, so quantum lectures, this in genus zero, it's uh, in a very pretty good shape. In a very good form. And I guess Starting with uh, given the proof of mere conjecture, etc. So uh, you, you have a pretty uh, good grasp of in genus zero. In higher genus, and there's certain properties. Uh, it's it's not not very good. So I mean, there is existence of uh, some form. But still not uh, not very good. So and so in G zero, uh, the main strategy is the following. So you start with uh, you want to first relate the virtual cycle of, we won't start with relating virtual cycle in genus zero of x 
let me omit uh, all the information. You want to relate this to uh, some sort of uh, China zero information of Y. And you start with this, with some kind of uh, induced bundle. And the, 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 this form was first, uh, I guess, proposed in Kansevich's uh, ori uh, original attempt to, in the Quintic case. So you want to first relay this, so this will be geometric part of this. And then, then you try to uh, unravel this part of information so that you can get uh, information of Grumman theory of X to Grumman theory of Y. So that's, that's uh, the w we'll come back to this later. <coughs> and so quantum Lehrer-Hirsch also is in pretty good form in genus zero. That's also uh, in, in a very good form. So I will say more about that. So, okay, so now I've talked about the two, two available tools. One is quantum lectures. The second one is quantum Lehrer-Hirsch. So assuming we have these two tools, what can we do? And what are tools we have? So another tool we can have is uh, basically Gromitian theory is deformation invariant. Uh, but deformation itself will not tell us much. And so you want to defor deform to something slightly singular. So that's the, sec the third tool we can have is degeneration. Uh, so the degeneration says that uh, the Gromitian, uh, so if you start with your Gromitian theory on X, and you can deform X so that uh, the central fiber can be slightly thinker, and this, uh, this can, how thinker can we be, can it be, this depends on what kind of uh, degeneration formula we can get. Uh, so, and then I, I guess there, the, the the uh, the double point degeneration like this. So I mean, this is not good picture. So let me do it again. Yeah, I'll say this. Something like this. So uh, this double point degeneration is so in the the so the Brownian theory of X. By some sort of a information invariance, this is the same as Roman here of X here. And by this, we still don't get much information. The Roman here X zero, the same as that, that doesn't tell us much. The important thing here is this guy can be written as some sort of Roman theory of, let's call this X one, X two. Some sort of relative Roman theory of X one. And this is one of a divisor. This is double point singularity, and so you have a divisor here. Somehow, the information comes from growing theory of x1, d, and x relative to growing to d. And so, hopefully, you can, uh, in this kind of degeneration analysis, you can, you can get growing theory of x from Grunin theory of x1 and Grunin theory x2. And this is not uh, usual Grunin theory, but already Grunin theory. Still, the geometry of this can uh, be simplified in some, in some way, or in other ways, they can be, uh, more, be more suitable for our analysis. And so in, in this kind of study there, the fourth tool we have is the nomical brain. And so that's, uh, once you have nomical variable, and this nomical variable is, uh, this is new, this is only a variable in quantum case. Uh, it, that there is no classical counterpart. And so, it, if some nomical variable uh, 
with respect to certain nominal variable, it, the growing theory proved to be uh, analytic function. And this is then there, it's possible to do some sort of analytic continuation, and that will give us a better understanding of this functionality. And so, so far, it's been very uh, vague, my phrasing, but I just want to bring these four available tools out so that we'll see how we can use them. And uh, the first example I will give is uh, this is uh, maybe do the ordinary flops. And this is uh, this is a case, special case of something called K equivalence. Or Krefeld transformation. Or what is this? So this will use uh, three of the uh, three of the four tools I mentioned. So you start with your space X, and then X uh, you have, and you want to, uh, so the X has the flopping contraction to X bar. And then you want to compare with Gromland theory of X prime, which we call is a flop. And so what, what is the uh, ordinary flop? Ordinary flop is, say, uh, I have, the exceptional, so these two are birational. They're all, and so their, their difference is some kind of surgery. And what kind of surgery do I have? So I have this, uh, so the, in this case, the x minus z will be complete isomorphic to x prime minus z prime. So that's the exceptional locus they have. And the exceptional locus will look like it's going to be over some kind of a projective bundle. So this is going to be some a second locus is projective bundle. And not only that, so this uh, the normal bundle of uh, the normal bundle of this second locus here is actually uh, because now this z is a projective bundle. So you have is, let's call this uh, phi, phi bar. Oh, sorry, so some. So, uh, and then the picture here is symmetric. So this guy is going to be the projective bundle over the same base. So these two are actually the same. <coughs> and so the picture here is completely symmetric. So you have this line. And then the normal bundle is going to be And so uh, I assume the rank of f is the same as rank of f prime. And this, in this case, let's, let's uh, call it r plus y. So this is a projective bundle over the space. What, so uh, is this notation already too complicated? So you think about the, the simplest case of this. The simplest case of this uh, is the following. So if you take uh, S to be a point and R to be one, 
So that's the simplest case. So now what you have here is uh, this Z is going to be, in this case, Z is going to be uh, P1. And then the normal bundle of Z is going to be O minus 1. Because this, this is uh, rank two bundle, rank two bundle. So in this case, uh, you, what you see here is, so this is a case, uh, this is usually called a TF one. And so this is, uh, so in this case, of course, dimension of x is three. So in this case, what can we say about the following theory? And so, and you can, you also see that uh, this is the PR, so this is a P1, and then the normal bundle is O minus one minus one, so on the, near the exceptional, so on the exceptional locus is cloud VL along. And you can see that that's why they're K equivalent and or Krypton, this is, a, this is a Krypton case. So how can you show, so we want to show that, uh, and so what do we know about this factorizing? And we want to, we want to be able to say, so the, the, maybe the theorem, so the rough form is that, uh, we want to show that the quantum cohomology or chromium theory of X it's equivalent to quantum cohomology of x prime. But how can we do that? So you, we start with, uh, you start with classical. And we want to, we want to get this rough form to the, uh, as, to the best possible, so best possible form. Of functionality, and so let's start with this case. So first of all, I want to, uh, if I want to identify quantum core march, I better first identify classical core march. So you want to, uh, so uh, you want to first identify classical core march, and you use identification to identify your quantum core march. And so what do I mean by this? So first, you want to show that uh, there is a natural correspondence. And this natural correspondence is the following. So this is uh, you get from, and then there is uh, some kind of cycle. And so let's say if you have your F here, and then this one, this gamma F is your uh, graph here, but you take closure. So it becomes some kind of gel class, the product. And this F is uh, the correspondence between the uh, cohomology of X and cohomology of X prime induced from graph closure. And this is uh, induced. And you can prove that this is uh, F is isomorphism. In fact, it's, it's, it's stronger. It actually identifies the child motif. And uh, in particular, from Gary Perry. However, uh, this, this correspondence does not identify the ring structure, and that's the main thing. So.
So, and then you say, uh, well, quantum cohomology deformation of classical cohomology, if it doesn't preserve the classical cohomology ring, how can it preserve quantum cohomology ring? And that's where the analytic continuation will come into play. So it, it does not preserve ring structure. And in fact, uh, so this is, so now how do I, how can I say about, what can I say about this? In, in, in the quantum case, I want to, so I, uh, now I fix this F, I want to use F, this correspondence, to identify all the information between these two. And in particular, for a nomical variable, I want to send nomical variable to this. So this is it. This? Excuse me, this yes. is not one homology, you speak about differential homology, second homology homology homology. Well, let's th th restrict on the even part. Even part. Okay. Yeah. But most of this can be applied to uh, our part as well. But, 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 but for, for, for our purpose, let's restrict the second part. The, so and if I, want, I insist on this, then there is also a problem because uh, you can actually, even though it preserve this, but when you try to, and so remember, I have contract, I've contracted one projective bundle or projective space over this. So this projective space has This is a line class of the fiber class of my projective bundle. And so uh, this, this is a fiber-wise uh, line class. And if you take your fiber-wise line class map over, it will be, but it also does not preserve, non this is a non-effective class in X prime. And so that's, a, that's another problem. So I, this is of course then FQ of minus L prime is different than Q of minus L prime. It's, it's not in the non covariant. <coughs> of X prime. So it's because this is not effective. So the, the, the solution to, to all these is you have to uh, do analytic continuation. First of all, you want to show that uh, the solution of this is show that world within theory of X is analytic with respect to the flopping curve. So this is particular nomical variable. The nomical, so by this I mean nomical variable corresponding to uh, the curve which performs the property contraction. In this case will be your, uh, this sort of a re result wonderful case, this will be a P1, this, this P1. So we want to first show this analytic respect to this. And so now, now you can say that, uh, so as, so then as an analytic function, I'll say a little bit more about QL. So this uh, growing theory of X is uh, the uh, series expansion at QL equal to zero. And the growing theory of X prime is series expansion at QL equal to infinity. Or well, in other words, it's QL, or QL prime equal to zero. So that's what, what one can show is the growing theory of this guy and that guy is they're actually the same growing theory on P1. And then if you expand at zero, you get growing theory of this, expect growing theory of that. And so, so far, most of other cases proven were by computation. So this kind of uh, quantum transformation conjecture or things like that. And so, but you remember, uh, I, I, I cannot compute anything because my x and x prime are very general. I only, only give some constraint of local structure. In, 
near my surgery. So what can I do? So the a key step to perform this is to do degeneration. So So you start with your X and maybe you with some kind of Z inside this. Now you do the tr sort of trivial degeneration. This is a called deformation <coughs> to normal cone. And then what you have here is, uh, so if you do this classical deformation to normal cone, what you have here is the following. Something like this will happen. And this becomes x tilde, where this is actually blow up z and x. And this guy is a projected bundle over uh, z. Of the normal bundle of z inside x, but you compactify it. And so this is your, so they are glued along a divisor, shear divisor. And so, and this, as I said, this uh, a priori doesn't help us because we don't know x, we don't know x tilde. But this guy is simple. But now, if you uh, do the same thing with x prime, and what you'll get here is you'll get the same thing. So, like here is x prime tilde. In this case, it's a product of z prime x prime. And then it also has this. So sorry. So maybe I should draw it slightly different to emphasize their difference. Draw like this. And so again, th this part. This part is your uh, projective bundle. And this part is x prime bar. But uh, if you look at the picture, if you draw it out again, then you actually see their x tilde is the same as x prime tilde. And this is just like this case, if you Pull this up, uh, then you will see they're actually the same upstairs. So, what you get here is this. This blow up is actually the same. And so, in order, so, so if there is any way, so these two become the same. So, if there is any way I get information from these combined two to here, and then these two to there, then I will be able to get information. Uh, so I will, I'll be reduced. So the degeneration formula reduce uh, the comparison to these two. And these two, as you can see, these two are just some kind of a simple complication near the exceptional locus to what we call local models of ordinary flux. And so these two, now these two, uh, these two, what, what are these two? These two are actually some kind of a projected bundle over projected bundle, right? So remember, this guy, Z itself, is a projective bundle. And, and this local model is a projective bundle over projective bundle. So it's some kind of toric bundle over a smooth uh, sub variety S. And so now, but S also, again, are the same, as I emphasize here. S are the same. So now you reduce to local models, which are some, somewhat uh, the double projective bundle over smooth space. So now what you can do here is to say that, okay, so I only have to compute these two. But to compute these two, I start with the same S. 
And then I uh, have different, so I, I'm reduced to local models, which are double projected bundle. So now the task is much easier, and then you can deal with double projected bundle over the same base by the quantum derivative. So that schematically is what one can do with this kind of uh, then after, you know, there's still some hard work to do, but schematically that's how one can deal with this uh, case of flux. Yes. So this is the, the simplest case, uh, and strange enough, this is, uh, so for clinical model, this seems to be the best functionality because they are actually the same. It's just like uh, their analytic continuation from one to the other. So the second example will be to do, <coughs> deal with uh, row up along complete intersection centers. And you'll see why I need complete intersection centers, and that's because common lectures, the problem of common lectures. Okay, so Let's see, so let's start with, again, X is uh, smooth projective variety, and Z is uh, smooth, is a, a smooth center inside X, and I want to blow up along this. So let's follow. This. And suppose I know growing with the theory of X, I want to compute growing with the theory of X delta. Well, uh, I want to, so how can I do this? And you note know that there, there I don't have to compute because I'm comparing these two. So as long as they're the same, I'm happy. But here I do want to compute x delta. And so what can I do? And uh, so far we haven't developed a good technique of this. And so let's try to see if we can use the, uh, these uh, tools that help us compute in this. So assume that uh, the Z is a uh, complete intersection. And then in fact, so you have a line bundles. So that means it's cut out by uh, sections of very ample line bundles. So Z is And a priori, you will see that uh, x delta has nothing to do with, uh, well, I mean, z is complete intersection, but that's not what we want to compute. We want to compute x delta. And x delta has nothing to do with uh, common Lipschitz or common Hirsch. So that's where we will come into. So, and then it's easy manipulation that you will see the following. So in other words, you have this section which subjects uh, this, you want to, Think about uh, this subject ideal sheath of Z. And so now from this diagram, it's easy to see that uh, so, and so you have an embedding of this. So you grow up of X delta. So X delta grow up becomes a sub scheme of this. And this is over x. And this usually is not complete intersection either. So, but what we what we know about this uh, embedding is that there is a universal. So maybe I will, what I will call this is. So let's give this a name. Vector bundle of this. So we have a vector bundle. And then you can pull back this vector bundle. Yeah. And there is a universal sub-bundle, this uh, topological bundle, let's write it as O minus one. And there's a universal quotient bundle. And then you have this uh, sigmas, which 
give you a section. So of course this sigma induce this section here. induce the section here and which can be then project to this. Oh, that's not very clear. The section here, sigma, induce uh, the section here. Let's call it sigma Q. So in this case, what can we do about uh, X to it. So we're trying to uh, compute the Grunwin theory of blow up by in two steps. First, we will we want to go to its projective bundle, but projective bundle is good because we we have sort of quantum de Hirsch. We can go X to its projective bundle. Now we want to go from projective bundle to its uh, to its, but this is, so uh, a simple lemma is that uh, Z is complete intersection center, then you get uh, the You get the zero section of this induced section is actually the same as x to the. And so that's very close to complete the section except and now I this Q is uh, you, in general not split and it's so it's not direct sum of line bundles. It's not complete intersection in this case. Still, it has a good property. And so let's try to analyze its good property because I mean from here, you can see. Ah, however, we do know this act. It's uh, so we are. Uh, Q is some, something called convex vector bundle. In the sense that if you have a non trivial for any non trivial map, So you have some kind of positivity because it has inherent positivity from you know this L are all very very ample, so they're all positive, etc. So you can easily prove this. And so in, in, in the same in the same uh, uh, way we can I, I explain the uh, the quantum lectures case. There is some kind of generalization. You can actually show that uh, in this case, can be written as so the virtual class has this comparison. So some kind of generalization of conservative formula. So this Q and Y is some kind of uh, induced bundle to the uh, to this by pull back to its universal curve and push forward. And because of this, so you only have actually zero, and so that's bundle, and you can take the top chain class. Some some kind of abstraction, so similar to some kind of abstraction bundle. So this formula is still correct, and this 
in this general form is observed uh, by uh, Kim Crash and Tony Pante. So they observe, so sort of a They yeah, observed that the, this is actually true from the general property of <coughs> virtual classes. So now we're we're, we're sort of relate. We are relating this to to uh, so now we can compute the, uh, this by knowing if we know this. But this guy again. Remember now we are we want to go from Gromian theory of X, now we can go, go to Gromian theory of uh, projective bundle of X. So this is a quantum Lorentz Hirsch. And now we do have this, but this one is not usual uh, not, not the usual quantum Lefschetz form. So uh, so we want to use quantum Lefschetz and so what can we do? You observe that there is such a form of this. Here's the universal short deck sequence. And so, and by some kind of a, a multipli uh, mul mul multiplicativity of this, you can, you can say that this actually is the same as of, sorry, so. V. Now all these are split bundles, and then you can apply it sort of a slightly generalized. Quantum lessons. You'll get going in theory. Next to it. And so this, uh, unfortunately, as I said, I, 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 I don't have a proof of the general conjecture of, uh, of Kazakov consideration and Pentad because this only works uh, in, in the complete mistake center. And if it's not complete mistake center, you still have this kind of a subjectivity, and it still embeds. But then, if and Q is, but this is not correct. In general, this is in general, you will have uh, when Z is not complete intersection, you will have uh, much more contribution than this. This will be actually some kind of an add to the union of, uh, so all the fibers. And in, this, in, in the com complete intersection case, this fiber over Z happened to be just the Z delta, the uh, exceptional divider. So it's sort of absorbed into this. But this fiber can be very, very large. And one can try to, uh, so, So to, to get more general uh, uh, broad formula speculation is the following. So uh, is maybe you can start with, for example, you take Z to be a uh, twisted cube. And X to be P3, the simplest. Then you will try to study the blow up of, twi of uh, twisted cubic in P3. The the simple example I can think of uh, where this Z is not a uh, complete intersection. And so in this case, maybe you can try to uh, do the following. So you take, you take a family of ideals. So that I0 is I, IZ. But then you can try to uh, make this into a family such that this uh, family of this of ideals over uh, P3 cross A1 or P1 is uh, this guy is uh, the same as IZ. But then you just freely deform, so these treated cubics are defined by uh, three 
quadratic polynomial. <coughs> so it, I don't know, it's called P1, P2, P3. Oh, maybe not so good. P, so F1, F2, F3. And you can do some kind of general deformation of this. And then this three quadratic polynomials in P3 will intersect only at, uh, so general when, uh, so uh, this will be, so this will be F1, T, F2, T, this is T, sorry, so. And so, in this case, maybe, so this will be, so uh, if you take your P3 cross A1 or P1, then you grow up along uh, this ideal of this. Sorry, sorry. So what you'll see here is uh, that the family will become some kind of a, the family will be, in the general fiber, you'll be in a graph of eight points. And so there are eight P2s uh, involved, and graph points usually are not so, not so hard. One can probably deal with that. So the, the general fiber of this A1, my T variable, Will be the general fiber will be the grow up. So this will be grow up of A points in P3. The, the special fiber uh, will be not just the grow up of P, not just X. There's one part which is X delta, which is grow up of twisted cubic in P3. But then there is another part because, I mean, the broad center is not uh, flat at zero. So, I mean, it doesn't commute with space change. So when you do that, it will be similar to what you have in the, the case, where this will be some kind of a, a projected bump over Z. So maybe from this diagram, uh, one can try to get uh, the this information. Knowing the blow up of eight points and this projected bundle, which is not too bad because this is a P1, and so this is the uh, bundle over some kind of torque, uh, so projected bundle over uh, P1. And so that's also probably okay, and it's probably okay, and hopefully one can get information of this. Just some kind of speculation. I haven't been able to finish that yet. That's uh, the second example. The third example is uh, to do something in between these two. So now we have grow up, and we have uh, the the we have grow up, and in some sense, in some cases, special cases, and we have. The, the flap, and then there is something actually connect these two, namely what we call ordinary flips. So it will not be great pound in this case, not k equivalent. So in this case, it's very similar to what we had before. So it. it so you start with the x, and then you have an exceptional locus z here. Now exceptional locus z is also some kind of projected bundle over, uh, so this x. You have a flipping contraction to x bar, so that this, uh, this z over s is actually some kind of, again, projected bundle over this. And normal bundle is also Except in this case, my, the rank of these two bundles are not symmetric. So the rank of F is R plus one. 
and rank of r prime is r prime plus one. And if this is going to be, if r is equal to r prime, then you have on the other side, you would have uh, the flapping contraction, I, I, the flap I talked about. But now assume r is greater than r prime. Then what you have here is now, so what you have here is this is a PR bundle over base. And the, the other side will be PR prime bundle over base. So it will be smaller, your, sur your surgery out a bigger per J space in exchange of a smaller per J space. Again, the simple example will be, uh, so you want to think of S is a point. So you surgery out uh, PR and surgery in PR prime, and so R prime is less than R. So if you compare now the cohomology, so you can do the same uh, correspondence I talked about. So if you do the same correspondence, uh, just use the graph closure because this is still birational. Still birational, and you can do the graph closure I talked about, and then what you will see here is this one. This one has more cohomology classes than that. So you expect this guy to be surjective, but not injected. And so there is some kind of kernel. The number of the dimension of this will be exactly the number of classes you lose in this surgery. In fact, this is like the way I write it is a bit dumb, but anyway, so there is this is just a vector space. So what you find here is actually so this you can write this as uh, orthogonal direct sum of the kernel and the cohomology of the other side. So suppose I have I know quantum cohomology of x. Can I do? Can I find quantum cohomology x prime? And so I only have uh, two, three minutes left. Let me very quickly say what I expect to have. In this, in this generality, we haven't proved uh, much, but uh, so in some special cases, uh, when this is not projected from just the project space, as I said, link, and then, in fact, just say local model, you observe the following phenomenon. So if you take quantum cohomology, as I said, this quantum cohomology of x, in this case, actually, uh, so in the flopping flop case, the quantum cohomology is analytic, but the radius convergence is only one. But in this case, quantum cohomology is analytic in QL, and with radius convergence is actually infinity. So it's, 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 a, it's a global energy function. But then you start to think about this, uh, this QL as in uh, P1, so as, as we did. So if you expand at zero, you get this. But what if you push to infinity? And when you push to infinity, what happened with this is, uh, so when you uh, take in a neighborhood of QL equal to infinity. What happened with this is, uh, so this is similar to what conservative explained, use uh, this scaling equation. I, I didn't use scaling, I just used the Boring connection. So sort of a, which would be similar, uh, in fact, I think equivalent. Since in neighborhood infinity, this, this quantum cohomology will sort of decouple into quantum cohomology of x prime plus the, uh, this part. And then there is 
some kind of a irregular part. I'm sorry, so I my time is up, so I will I will not be able to explain this too well. So if you push to infinity, and then there is a way to extract the uh, the closed system, which is regular at infinity, which will expect you actually get clinical homology at at prime. And then there is some kind of regular part which will very much look like this, uh, as I said, this R prime. And the regular part will be, in this case, because of this, it will be semi-simple, and but it will be looking a little bit like P R minus R prime, in this case. But sorry, so my time's up. Thank you very much. So if so, the for example, if you look at the Dubrovnik connection, and Dubrovnik connection uh, is regular, and but when you uh, when you energy continue to infinity, the Dubrovnik connection in some direction becomes irregular, and so how? But you want so and but of course all these are mixed, so you want to be able to extract the uh, regular part out of this, and there's some kind of classical theory of irregular connections or, uh, or irregular D modules where <coughs> you can decompose this into some way, solve differential equation. And so in, once you uh, remove the irregular part, then you will actually get something which is equivalent to quantum homology of uh, your flip. And so this part maybe is worth mentioning that if, if you take, so as I mentioned, if in this case, if r is equal to r prime, so sort of one limit, this will be flat, and there will be no irregular part. But if r prime is equal to zero, that's exactly the proa case, because it's a proa of your s. So this will be your proa of s. And so that will be, and so we're hoping to be able to uh, get to. So, so now there are some kind of two way to approach proa. One is to take some kind of limit of one one discrete family of uh, limit from flat to to flip and then then to blow up, or you can just do it by the uh, the, uh, the speculation I explained. Oh, let's thank the speaker again.